başla. Hello everyone. Uh, in this week of the Spin Journal Club, uh, I wanted to talk about the spin hole effect, inverse spin hole effect, and their applications. So let's start with the spin hole effect. In order to distinguish the spin hole effect from the normal hole effect, uh, I wanted to give you a brief information about the normal hole effect. Let's consider we have a coordinate system, namely we have X, Y, Z axis. And let's think we have a thin film of a conductor material. If we apply a current through this material along X direction, uh, the electrons will move through this material along uh, minus X direction. If we apply a magnetic field uh, perpendicular to the film plane, uh, these moving uh, electrons will feel a force, uh, namely the Lorentz force. Because of this force, this electron will move to one side of the material. Let's say this is the uh, zero side of the material. Uh, because electrons are collected at this zero side, the Fermi level of this side increase compared to the other side. So it means that uh, if we put a voltmeter between these two electrodes, between these two sides, uh, we can observe a voltage difference in our voltmeters. And this voltage is depend on the magnetic field's magnitude. If I increase the magnitude of magnetic field, the observed voltage will increase. And remember that uh, there is no spin information of electron in this concept. However, in the spin hole effect concept, there is no external magnetic field applied to the sample, but there is spin information of free electrons. Uh, let's think we have two electrons and first one have a spin up information and the other has a spin down information. Because of the spin orbit coupling, uh, they feel a force here. Because of this, uh, this electron will move to one side of the sample and the other uh, electron will move to other side of the sample. So uh, if we think they have the uh, same amount of electrons are moving to the sides, uh, because of that, there will be no Fermi level difference between these two sides. If I put a voltmeter uh, between these two sides, uh, I cannot observe any voltage difference. So, in short, we can say uh, the spin hole effect is the spin polarization of free electrons at the edges of the material uh, when we apply current through this material. So, um, as we know from the literature, spin orbit coupling occur at any material, but it, be it becomes uh, dominant for as the um, atomic number increase. Because of that, it becomes more apparent in heavy metals like platinum, iridium, palladium, tantalum, tungsten, and so on. So, um, spin hole effect is predicted for the first time by uh, Diakonov and Perel in uh, 1971. And the title was uh, Possibility of Orienting Electron Spins with Current. And this was the theoretical prediction. There was no experiment. After 33 years, uh, Kato et al. Uh, experimentally observed the spin hole effect in a semiconductor device. They used a gallium arsenide sample and they applied current through this material and they observed uh, spin polarization at the edges of the materials by using the carrier rotation microscopy. And this was very beautiful experimental concept that we can observe spin hole effect experimentally. In this concept, um, there is a very important parameter, namely the spin hole angle. And it is a measure of the conversion efficiency between charge currents and pure spin currents. And it is a material dependent parameter. Mathematically, we can say uh, the spin hole angle is the ratio uh, of uh, created uh, spin current uh, divided by applied charge current. 
So this is the material dependent parameter. After the observation of spin hole effect in gallium arsenide material, uh, several studies have focused on to find out uh, which material have how much uh, uh, spin hole angle. So several studies um, also focused on to increase this efficiency. And you can see uh, several exotic materials in the literature and presents a 100 uh, spin hole angle. Uh, in this concept, there is uh, definitions like positive and negative spin hole, ang spin hole angles. Uh, if we apply current through the material, uh, if the spin polarization at the edges is clockwise, we call this positive spin hole angle. If the polarization at the edges is counterclockwise, uh, according to the current, we call this a negative spin hole angle. So a question arises here, uh, and question is, can we manipulate the magnetization of a magnetic material via this spin hole effect? The answer is yes. In order to do this, uh, we need to fabricate a bilayer system consisting of a ferromagnetic layer and consisting a heavy metal layer. When we apply current to this material, uh, the electron will flow, will flow uh, everywhere of this bilayer structure. However, the electron passing through the heavy metal uh, will be polarized due to the spin hole effect and it will be injected into the ferromagnetic layer. Uh, the injected spin information uh, will apply a torque to the magnetization state of the ferromagnet. So, uh, we can manipulate the magnetization, even we can switch the magnetization by using spin hole effect. Here, uh, there is a beautiful example of the switching phenomena by using current. Um, in this study, they used a multi-layer structure of uh, tantalum, platinum, cobalt, copper, tantalum, and platinum and the thickness are given here in nanometers. And because cobalt has um, one nanometer thickness, it provides a perpendicular magnetic anisotropy. And if we fabricate a device by using this structure in the geometry of um, hole measurement, and if we measure the hole voltage created at these terminals, uh, we can observe uh, anomalous hole resistance. Uh, anomalous hole resistance is a well-known phenomena uh, for the ferromagnetic materials. Uh, it defines this. If the magnetization uh, stays along Z direction, positive Z direction, it gives a um, high resistance. If the uh, magnetization stays along minus Z direction, it provides the lower resistance state. We can observe this resistance state by sweeping the magnetic field along the Z direction. So um, when we sweep the current, we can change, we can observe this uh, switching uh, in the case of, uh, in the, in the assist, uh, under the assisting field. There is an assisting field here in order to break the symmetry of this magnetic anisotropy uh, the, we, sh we need to apply a um, um, magnetic field, which is constant, and uh, it is directed to X uh, direction. Uh, under this assisting field, when we sweep the current, we can observe this magnetization can switch. And when you check the resistance states, it is the same uh, as the observed in this uh, magnetic field sweeping experiment. So this is very beautiful. Um, observation of the switching by using currents, switching of magnetization by using currents. currents. So in the literature, there are um, several studies have focused on uh, to remove the assisting magnetic field. In order to do this, uh, they, want, they add, they fabricate their structure uh, in, in a wedge geometry. 
in addition to the perpendicular magnetic anisotropy, this wedge will add a tilted magnetic anisotropy to the system. Uh, in this case, they characterize their sample again by, by using the anomalous hall resistance and they observe characteristic switching under magnetic field. And, and they did experiment without any assisting magnetic field. When they apply minus one milliamp to the sample, they observe the resistance state was high. And when they apply positive uh, one milliamp to the sample, uh, the resistance state was low. So without uh, any help of uh, external magnetic field, uh, the switching uh, successfully done by using current. And this was very beautiful uh, example. We can make some uh, data storage device. In the light of uh, these findings, um, several studies uh, have focused on to make some uh, data storage devices. Um, here we have a MTG based data storage device. Uh, I want to give you a brief information about this device. Uh, this is fabricated onto um, a heavy metal uh, line strip. And this uh, magnetic tunnel junction uh, consisting a magnetically free layer. It means that its magnetization is free to switch up or downside. And it has a pinnet layer, a magnetically pinnet layer. Its magnetization is pinnet one direction. It, it is not rotating by the applied magnetic field or uh, by the applied current. So it creates a reference for this uh, um, free layer. In this device, uh, if the and this device, is, uh, the magnetic layers uh, are separated uh, with an uh, insulating layer. In this device, uh, if the magnetizations are parallel to each other, uh, it provides a low resistance state. If the magnetizations are anti-parallel to each other, uh, it provides higher resistance state. So we can define our uh, data, um, we can say zero and one uh, by applying currents by switching this magnetization uh, of this free layer. And we can read the resistance state by applying a very low current through this material. So this is another beautiful concept of uh, spin hole effect application. Um, by using the same concept, we can make uh, a random bit generator. Uh, here again, we have a magnetic tunnel junction and uh, it is fabricated on a heavy metal stripe. When we apply current to this uh, heavy metal, uh, the magnetization of this free layer will rotate to an impelling state. When we remove this current, it will choose a way up or down. So in this case, it will generate a random bit. Um, and if we provide a media for the switching probability for 50%, it will become a random bit generator. They made several experiments based on this, and they observed when they applied a 40 millitesla assisting magnetic field into the system, uh, they observed the probability switching uh, becomes, uh, switching probability becomes 50% uh, in any case from down to up up to down, down to down, or up to up. All of these uh, probabilities becomes uh, very close to 50%. And we can use these uh, random bit generators in our mobile phones as an ID card, uh, namely the physically unclonable uh, functions. Uh, in the literature, you can find many different type of uh, applications and this is the one of them. Uh, this is the racetrack memory uh, version uh, zero and um, 4.0. And uh, I don't want to go deep into uh, applications. So you can find these applications in the literature. And shortly, I can say uh, by using the um, spin hole effect, we can make many different type of devices. So for summary for the spin hole effect, we discussed here uh, the phenomenology of the spin hole effect, and we talk about the brief history of the spin hole effect 
and we discussed about uh, several applications on it. That's all I want to talk about the spin hole effect for now.